The long-awaited Amazon Prime Day is officially here. The e-commerce giant has slashed prices on thousands of items, kicking off early holiday shopping season amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining us now to discuss is Perry Mandarino of B. Riley FBR. Perry, good to see you. So Amazon Prime Day, we yeah. know usually happens in July. Uh, the fact that it's now in October, do you think, and if it remains there perhaps in the coming years, do you think that it becomes the new Black Friday? Well, sure, and good morning. Um, from what I see is that there's a real, you know, as Victoria just mentioned, this world today is just so different. Not only is it a presidential election year, it is also with COVID. So there's just so much uncertainty in the economy and the world. So I think given what happened when COVID first hit with the supply chain disruptions on how it took so long to deliver goods for Amazon, I think having an earlier shopping season is absolutely critical. Um, people may be wanting to spend more given the results of the election, if we even know the results of the election on November 4th. And the push to um, the push to discount early is happening, and it's not just it's not just Amazon. A bunch of other retailers have started early. Um, they've started early sales beginning of October. I think Target announced that they're doing, and a couple in Walmart announced that they're doing uh, Black Friday prices throughout the whole month of um, of November. So it's it's a different dynamic this year. Perry, you co-head B. Riley's uh, investment banking business and have worked on a lot of high-profile restructurings this year. Just the fact that Amazon might rack in or rake in close to $10 billion worldwide from Prime Day, does that cause more bankruptcies in retail amongst the weakest players post-holiday shopping season? It, uh, well, certainly. If, if, if retailers who are on the edge right now don't have really strong seasons, come January, you could see a whole bunch of of bankruptcies. I think the bankruptcies are probably more or less done for this year. Um, most of the liquidations that have been, um, that were going on are completed. So Amazon and everyone else is not competing against liquidations anymore. They're competing against themselves, but sure. Uh, coupled with the um, debt that retailers have, you know, retail was a, a sector that was never meant to have a lot of debt. You know, going back to the 70s, you know, factors started and earlier than that for cyclical uh, borrowing needs and then junk bonds came along. But retail is generally a sector that should not have a lot of debt. You know, Perry, you've been doing this a while. Uh, you've been in the business of restructuring and turnaround since 1987, including in retail. So you've seen lots of, of companies come and go. Right. To your mind, who in the retail sector is best positioned? And I and I feel like a broken record because we keep saying Walmart and Amazon. But if that's what you say, that's what you say. But who, who in your mind is best positioned here to weather this and perhaps maybe even come out of the pandemic stronger than before? Sure. And I think generally it's it's discount retailers. I think it is. Um, I think they've. I think retailers in general have learned a lot during the pandemic. I think they learned to control inventory levels. If you go um, to different uh, department stores now, go to different stores, they don't seem the shelves don't seem as full, but the sales are still pretty strong, right? Look at the uh, all the earnings and the the comp store sales that have been released. So I think one of the things that the pandemic did um, is probably. Um, give retailers a different way to look at business that maybe you don't have to have everything for everyone and your sales are still going to remain strong. So I think discounters are going to remain strong. I mean, supermarkets, they were, there were a bunch of supermarket chains that were, you know, in real trouble and now they are thriving. Uh, they had some supply issues, but they seem to be back to normal now. So I think the discounters, I think, um, I think value uh, retailers, um, I think they are going to thrive post-pandemic and, and post um, uh, this year. What are you hearing on the consultant? Oh, go ahead, Alexis. Sorry, when you say discount retailers, do you mean like the dollar generals of the world or a target? Uh, everyone, every, and in between, everyone in between. Even, you know, there's, um, you know, there's some that are in bankruptcy that are doing very well, like Tuesday mornings doing very well in bankruptcy based on their publicly reported numbers. So I think that trend will continue. I think, um, you know, having good value and selection and in retail, one of the main tenants of retail is having 
the product that identifying with your customers, even apparel. I think you'll see online apparel take off, which could potentially be a problem for some of the mall-based stores. Harry, what are you hearing in terms of industry consolidation? Clearly, there has to be more. Uh, and what does industry consolidation next year look like? Is this where an Amazon buys a decaying Macy's? What does it look like to you? Um, I do believe consolidation will absolutely be um, will happen in retail. Um, Amazon, it seems they've been kicking around looking at retailers over the years. I was involved in one or two where they took a look uh, going back five years, but they haven't pulled the trigger yet, other than obviously um, Whole Foods. So, yeah, could I see Amazon doing something bold? I mean, you know, their leader is not the one of the richest guys in the world because he's been shy. And I think they will, um, again, change the way that, um, you know, online retailing is done by perhaps having some type of brick and mortar footprint. All right, Perry Mandarino of B. Riley FBR, thank you. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.